Hi folks, uh, good to see you again. The purpose of this uh, presentation is to try and hope to clarify some of the terms that are used in your readings this week. One of the terms that is difficult for people to understand in the area of kinship is the lineage, um, in part because we don't really track lineages in the same way in our society. Most of you count your inheritance, count your families from both sides of your family. It's a little strange to think about a society in which your entire extended family is known, but only one side of your family tree is really considered important. This photo is of a Hmong village in which matrilineal inheritance is practiced, and all of the people in, in this photo consider themselves significantly family to one another because all of them are connected through their mothers, but not their fathers. There's a couple of uh, terminologies, uh, visual terminology, I guess, uh, that you need to learn in order to understand a kinship diagram. The lucky thing here is, if you learn this from me, you'll never need to learn it in another class because kinship diagrams are the same everywhere in the social sciences. It's pretty easy. Um, circles represent females. Triangles represent males. Um, and they'll be joined together much like you might have seen in a family tree uh, with connected lines. Uh, parents, when they have children, split off uh, into separate tines, um, and each tine is one of their children. Um, if two people marry, they get an equal sign. If they divorce, they get a cross sign. And if someone dies, they got crossed out too. Life is harsh. Here's a typical family tree. I say typical. It's not really typical because family trees are never look this neat. If you try to draw out your own this way, you'll discover it's actually kind of confusing to try and document the real relationships of a human family with marriages and divorces and so on and so forth. Um, in a bilateral kinship system like we have in our society, Everyone on this diagram is in the same lineage. Um, everyone who you consider to be your extended family is related to you. They might be related to you by your father. They might be related to you by your mother. You probably have terms uh, that you use to refer to all of these people too, like aunt, uncle, cousin. Um, we try to use, uh, not use these um, when we're starting to talk about non-bilateral systems um, because they often have different systems of kin terms. Everybody, though, every language has terms for mother, father, brother, sister, and child. So we use those terms exclusively to describe relationships, for instance, fathers, brothers, children. So there's the terminology that you need. Let's explain what a patrilineal society is. Starting from ego, everybody who's related to ego through ego's father is in his lineage. You see he's male because he's a triangle. Um, you don't, however, have to be male to be in someone's patrilineage um, because ego's father's sister is related to him through his father. She and all of her children are also in his patrilineage. One advantage of doing it this way is that everybody always knows what lineage they belong to. Because we in our society count descent from both sides, the only people in the world who have the same exact family as you are your brothers and sisters because they have the same relatives through your shared mother and father. However, in a patrilineal system, you'll find, um, if you tr actually try it out, um, that everyone in this lineage actually has the same exact lineage. Since it's always counted through the male side, that means everyone always has the exact same lineage. If you're trying to use kinship as the basis of social organization, that kind of stability is useful. It works just as well for the matrilineal side. Um, 
ego here, his mother, relates him to all of these folks. One interesting thing is that kinship terms uh, reflect these changes. Um, so for instance, in a patra lineage, oftentimes the father and the father's brother share the exact same kinship term, say dad, because the relationship that you have to someone through the lineage is much more important than the plain biological fact um, of who actually sired you. Similarly, in a matrilineal system, it's often case that, the case that your mother's brother is the most significant male in your life. Because unlike your father, your mother's brother is in your lineage. Uh, your book talks about a few other exotic versions. Um, Ambilineal descent is when you can draw from either side. But ego does at some point have to choose. Will I belong to the matrilineage, or will I belong to the patrilineage, or sometimes it's decided for them. In double descent, different kinds of inheritances go from one side to the other. Um, if in ambilineal and double descent, you can get things from both or either sides, why are they still considered unilineal descent? It's because these lineages are known, and the rules that determine what is inherited from what are still entirely clear. Hopefully this helped illuminate some of the concepts in the reading that are a little confusing when you encounter them just as text. Have a good week, um, and I'll see you later.